Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers. Where is the complex number? Okay, we'll find out. So we have an equation cosine theta equals 2 and we're going to be solving for theta. So let's take a look. First of all, when you see a problem like this, you're probably thinking about a lot of identities. They just run through your head, right? And one of the most important identities is based upon the Pythagorean theorem. And you hopefully know that. You should definitely know because it's one of the most important things. In general, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Awesome. Now, where do we go from here? We can go ahead and replace cosine with the value given, which is 2. So let's go ahead and replace cosine with 2. Cosine squared means 2 squared, so it's going to be a 4. And then if you solve this equation, uh-oh, I'm out of myself. Uh, you're going to get sine squared theta equals 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. And the problem is something squared is negative. It can't happen in the real world, can it? Well, who said we're in the real world? We're in a complex world because this channel is about complex numbers. So we're going to be looking for complex solutions. That's where the complex numbers come in. And from here, obviously, you can write two things, right? Sine theta can be root 3i. A number whose square is negative 1 is i. So i squared is negative 1. You should definitely, definitely know this. This is the basis of complex numbers, the definition of the imaginary unit. And you can also define i as the square root of negative 1 because it's the principal square root. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos I made, nine videos on basics of complex numbers. And if you have any questions, always let us know. So sine theta can be root 3i, which is negative 3 when squared, or it can be negative root 3i. Of course, there are two numbers whose square equals to a number, except for 0. 0 is very special, but we don't really care much about it because it's not interesting. Uh, so most of the time, we're going to have two solutions. And a complex number has two square roots in general. One of them is only called the principal square root so that we can make an agreement between the real numbers and complex numbers, okay? By the way, real numbers are also complex numbers because they're just a subset, okay? Or maybe complex numbers is an extension, right? Something like that because it's an afterthought, right? So where do we go from here? We can draw a triangle maybe. That would help, right? Even though we're in an imaginary world. <laughs> so let's see. Suppose this is your theta in the imaginary complex world, and we know that sine theta is root 3i. So if we suppose this is root 3i and this is 1, and sine cosine is supposed to be 2, so it should be this one. Hmm, interesting. It's a world where the hypotenuse is not the longest side, right? Obviously. And can you have a side length of square root of 3i? That's a good question. But for some purposes, we could draw this triangle even though it doesn't exist in the real world. Anyways, this doesn't really help us solve it, but I just want to show you some of the uh, implications of this equation because this equation has a lot of interesting implications. Now, if you had cosine theta equals one half, you could easily solve it, right? Because you can find the smallest angle whose cosine is two, I mean one half, I meant. And that will be, let's think about it. I think that will be cosine of 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, right, in the first quadrant. And then pi over 3, you can just subtract it from 2 pi or just put a minus sign in front of it. Because uh, first and uh, fourth quadrants, uh, you can reflect an angle over the x and you'll get the same cosine value, right? Think about your unit circle. If you're new to trigonometry, go ahead and refresh up. I also made quite a few videos on uh, trigonometry problems. I haven't made any lecture videos on trigonometry, but I, I guess that would be a good idea, maybe. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. Maybe we can just have a series of, you know, basics of trigonometry, unit circle, right triangle trigonometry, double angles and formulas and stuff like that. Some basic stuff. Anyways, let's see how we can solve this problem. Thanks to Euler, we have a form called uh, polar form. Um, there is a formula that's known by uh, as Euler's formula, which is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is beautiful because, for example, if you replace theta with pi, you would get the following. e to the i pi equals cosine of pi plus i sine pi. As you know, sine pi is zero because 
it's on the x-axis, so this is zero for sine, and for cosine, that would be negative one. So this is negative one, this is zero, so the i disappears, and we get into the real world, from the complex world to the real. And this equation sometimes is expressed as e to the i pi plus one equals zero, and it's usually called the most beautiful equation. I can kind of uh, come up or to talk about how to come up with this type of equation in another video. Maybe uh, in the near future we can do a video on that one. But this really nice identity and known as, I think, Euler's identity, one of the Euler's identity. There's probably another one. But uh, let's go ahead and use this because we have e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then by replacing theta with negative theta, I get cosine of negative theta, which is the same as cosine theta because cosine is even, but sine of negative theta is going to be negative sine of theta. So from these two equations, we can go ahead and add these up. Uh, sine theta is going to disappear, and we're going to get 2 cosine theta. And if you divide both sides by 2, as a result, to keep a long story short, I want to give you the shortcut. Again, in the lecture videos, I go over these in uh, more detail, but this is an identity we can use for cosine theta, which is nice. Because now, with this formula, you can find uh, cosine of theta, or you can find theta for which cosine theta is outside the interval negative 1 to 1 interval, because that's for real numbers. Remember, cosine is always between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, but that's only for real values. So you can go to complex intervals, uh, or for which um, the cosine is, uh, the theta is complex. <laughs> Anyways, or you can find the cosine of a complex number, like what is cosine of i? What is cosine of 2i? What is cosine of 1 plus i? What is cosine of uh, 3 plus 4i? Things like that, right? You can do things that you couldn't have imagined. Like, imagine you have an imaginary number. I, anyways, that's a different story. So now, let's go ahead and set this equal to 2. And that'll give us a beautiful equation. Of course, because Euler came up with this. Of course, that's beautiful. And now we can go ahead and cross multiply e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta equals 4. And then, uh, by the way, with the sign, there's an i at the bottom and minus sign. So it's, they're very similar if you memorize them together in tandem. It'll be easier. So now we have this equation. How do we solve it? Let's write the negative exponent as this, right? And then use substitution. Since e to the i theta is supposed to be a complex number, right? Remember, we just talked about it, and we said, oh, okay, this can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. By the way, if you replace e to the i theta with that and with that, it's not going to help you because that's going to put you back to square one. Like, I thought about it for a second, and I, I gave up. No, it's not going to work. It's just going to move you backwards. So what do we do? We go ahead and call this something. How about z? Because we haven't used z, did we? So if z is equal to e to the i theta, we're going to get z plus 1 over z equals 4. Now, do you think z is going to be real? And let me tell you, yes. Because z plus 1 over z, if z is positive, by the way, of course, we're not talking about the complex numbers being positive or negative, but we have an identity or inequality that says, okay, this is greater or equal to 2 if z is positive. And it's less than or equal to negative 2 if z is negative. It's kind of like an AMGM situation, okay? Anyways. Um, so, how do we solve it? Uh, let's multiply everything by z. And yes, we're going to have real solutions. And then from here, z is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be uh, square root of 12 over 2. That'll be 2 plus minus root 3. Awesome. So, we got these values, but what are we going to do with them, right? z is equal to e to the i theta, remember? So e to the i theta, let's go ahead and set it equal to 2 plus root 3 first because that one is kind of, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I can just do one, the rest is easy. They're very similar. So at this point, you probably want to do the following. Uh, turn this into a complex number. Why don't we multiply by e to the power 2 pi n i, which is 1 in the complex world. So that's how you can complexify things. And then use the natural logs. That's going to give you i theta equals ln 2 plus root 3 plus 2 pi n i. And then since our goal is to solve for theta, you can go ahead and multiply both sides by negative i or divide by i. Some people do that, but I like to multiply by negative i because negative i times i is negative i squared and negative i squared is equal to 1. Okay? So that's going to give us theta. And then here we're going to get um, 2 pi n 
because we're multiplying by negative i, remember? That'll give us 2 pi n minus i times ln 2 plus root 3. So that's going to be the value of theta for which cosine theta equals 2, but there's another value which you can evaluate. I hope I haven't made this problem because it kind of looks familiar. It's familiar, familiar, familiar to me, but anyways, I apologize if I did. It's been a while. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.